Welcome to Sammy's A Plus YouTube channel. I'm gonna show you how to do this question right here. Basically, they want you to isolate the variable L that's on the bottom of the fraction and it's inside brackets. What I'm gonna show you, it's not the conventional way and they will not teach you that in school. Most teachers will not teach you that, but uh, it's lots, a lot faster and a lot easier. So just watch and see. Okay, so some of you who watched my videos before, I always talk about cross multiplying and cross multiplying is not really what you think it is. It's a little bit more involved uh, where you could do a lot of things that maybe they haven't shown you in class that you could do. So what does that mean? It means here, the first thing I'm gonna do, let me get my pen. I'm gonna take this N right here and I'm gonna cross multiply it to the D. Remember I said anything on the bottom of a fraction, you could cross it to the top. If it crosses the equal sign, it has to cross to the top. And remember this D here, this D is over one. So that's why we call D the top. So N crosses to the D and I'm gonna have N D equals 2X over A plus L. We don't need the brackets anymore. The brackets were there just so that if we want to distribute the N inside, that's what the brackets were for. But since I cross multiplied it, I don't need the brackets anymore. Now what we do next, there are lots of things that we could do, but let me show you one thing you could do. I'm going to put this over one and I'll tell you that you could rotate the whole thing. So when you have one fraction here and an equal sign and another fraction here, you could do that. But let's say if I, if I put seven minus that here, then you will not be able to rotate anymore because that's not one fraction, that's a whole number minus a fraction. All right, so now, since we have one fraction on the left side of the equal sign and one fraction on the right-hand side of the equal sign, then we could rotate all of this. So that becomes one over and D equals A plus L over two X. Now I'm gonna go back to cross multiplying. I wanna cross multiply the two X to the top because if it's on the bottom and it crosses the equal sign, it goes to the top. So I'm gonna have two X over N D equals a plus L. Remember, we're trying to isolate the L. So always when you're doing this, you have to keep in mind that we're isolating the L. So we want to have the L by itself. That's why I removed this two X and I moved it there because now I have only a plus L. And now algebraically, we could just write two X over N D. And I'm gonna move this A to the other side of the equal sign, but this is A plus L. So when the A moves to the other side, it becomes minus A. Some people just say, why don't we cross multiply the A into here? No, you can't because the A here is A plus L. It's not one thing together by itself. It's, it's A plus L. So the relationship here, when you wanna move it to the other side, you gotta subtract it. And then that gives you L. Of course, you know, some students like to say, I'm gonna take away A from both sides. You could do that. But for me, when I move the A to the other side of the equal sign, it, it becomes minus A. Okay. And that's how simple something like this is if you use cross multiplying. Um, this will help you a great deal. Physics, chemistry, especially physics, when you're always trying to isolate the variable, you could do these kind of things. Yes, it's unconventional, but you could, if you do that, it, algebra becomes a lot easier. Like you could really play with every equation that you get and move things around as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Till next time, bye-bye.